Hey, we're going to read, continue and carry on Mr. Bowditch, chapter 19. The uh, chapter is titled, Strange Sailing Orders. Strange Sailing Orders. wonder what that means. Nate thought he had learned to face his sorrow until they sighted Cape Ann, and he knew that in a few hours he would be home. His hands began to shake. Desperately, he tried to keep his mind on the rocks and shoals of the entrance to Salem Harbor, Gale's Ledge to Starboard, Pilgrim Ledge. What could he say to Elizabeth's mother? Whale back to Starboard now, and a good berth to the northeast point of Baker's Island. What was there to say that wouldn't sound hollow and empty? Mid-channel now between Baker's Isle and Little Misery. Nate stared toward Naugus Head and Coney Island. Must keep them in line. If only he had a way with words, he could give her some comfort. Hardy's Rock on the south, the Rising Star Ledge, the Shoals of Eagle Island. On the north, Bowditch Ledge. Elizabeth Mothers would probably hate the sight of him. He'd only remind her of the happy months last summer before he had sailed. I'll tell her I want to return Elizabeth's dowry. Leave everything just as it is. I'll say I have to stay with the ship while we unload the cargo. I'll get out. That'll make it easier for her. Captain Prince's voice said, Southwest by south. They were almost there. Soon, Abbott's Rock to starboard. Almost home. Nate drew a quivering breath. When they had anchored, Captain Prince said, Go along, Mr. Bowditch. You aren't needed here. Aye, aye, sir. Nate left the ship. Polly was waiting on Derby Wharf. She stretched out both hands to him and kissed his cheek. Dear Nate, Aunt Mary's so anxious to see you. I came to meet you. I thought if I told you about Elizabeth, it would be easier. You're like what Lisa used to say of her, Polly. You have eyes in the back of your heart. Polly shook her head quickly and winked her tears back. I'm not a bit like Elizabeth, but I loved her. And... I'm like Aunt Mary. I love you, too, because you made Elizabeth so happy. They walked slowly home, and she told him of Elizabeth. It had been consumption. It takes more people than the sea, doesn't it, Nate? I wonder if doctors will ever find a way to conquer it, the way they are conquering smallpox. Consumption, I think, is tuberculosis, we call it today. Mrs. Boardman was waiting for him. It's good to have you home, Nate. I've missed you. The lump of dread in his heart went away. It was not until after supper when he climbed the stairs that the awful aloneness hit him. He turned toward the big corner room where he had said goodbye to Elizabeth. He stood by the closed door, unable to open it. Polly came up the stairs with a lighted lamp. I fixed the east bedroom for you, Nate. Sort of like a study with a desk and all. Nate followed her to the room saw the bookcases, the big desk, the armchair he liked. He said again, you do have eyes in the back of your heart. Three men from the Estrella tramped up the stairs, bringing his gear. Polly whispered, I sent for your things. She called, in here, please. The men looked around the room and nodded. They declared it was a proper berth for Mr. Bowditch, him with his tables of figures, long, long as main to bowline. They trampled down the stairs again. Polly said, I hope you have something to work on, hard. Why are you both so good to me? Pure selfishness, Polly told him. We'd like to have you here. It was more than a week later before Nate got around to what he had wanted to tell Elizabeth's mother about returning the dowry. We had such a short time together, I don't deserve keeping it. Mrs. Boardman said, you proud, foolish man. I never want to hear another word about it. She seemed to think she had settled that and went on talking about something else. Dr. Bentley brought Nate up to date on the news of Salem. Mr. Derby was broken in health, dying, but he had accomplished the last dream of his to have Salem build a frigate for the United States Navy. He had advanced $10,000 of the 26000 needed. Dr. Bentley showed Nate a copy of the broadside that had been printed to announce the building of the ship. The Salem frigate, take notice, Ye sons of freedom, all true lovers of the liberty of your country, 
Step forth and give your assistance to building the frigate to oppose French insolence and piracy. Let every man in the possession of a white oak tree be ambitious to be foremost in hurrying down the timber to Salem and fill the complement wanting where the noble structure is to be fabricated to maintain your rights upon the seas and make the name of America respected among the nations of the world. Your largest and longest trees are wanted and the arms of them for knees and rising timber for trees are wanted for the keel, which altogether will measure 146 feet in length and hew 16 inches square. Ooh, they want some big timbers. Polly went with Nate to Dr. Bentley and Captain Prince to see the Salem frigate in the ways. Dr. Bentley stared at the hull that was taking shape. Eliza Haskett, Derby's last dream, he said. Free men of Salem building a ship to defend America. We're going to need it someday, Prince said. Mr. Derby knew that men always could see around corners. They went to the Derby Wharf. A strange crew was aboard the Estrella, making ready to sail. Some men in Boston had bought the ship. Captain Prince watched their crew. Lubbers, I wouldn't sail with that crew if they gave me the ship. Nate spoke before he thought, I would. Right now, I'd sail on anything or anywhere. I'd, he stopped embarrassed. Captain Prince and Dr. Bentley were embarrassed for him. They began to talk about something else. Polly looked squarely into his eyes. I know you would, and I don't blame you. Bless Polly. She did understand. She knew that friends and neighbors, even old friends and good neighbors, could fill the emptiness in his heart. When he and Polly reached home, there was a letter waiting for Nate. It had been elected, he had been elected a fellow to the American Academy of Arts and Sciences. It seemed to Nate, it seemed to Nate his mind fumbled trying to grasp the meaning as cold fingers fumbled trying to untie a knot. Nate, how wonderful, Mrs. Boardman said. I, I, you must, I, I must see Mary Crown and Shield. I must, I just remembered something. She put on her bonnet and hurried out. Polly's eyes twinkled. Salem will know about this before dark, from Gallows here to the Beverly Landing. Then she sobered. I wish it had come sooner, Nate. She did not say more. She did not need to. In the days that followed, Nate had fun bringing... In the days that followed, she had fun bringing Nate reports of Salem's reaction to the news. Not everyone knew what it was all about, but they were sure it was something fine. Science. They knew Nate had worked on something about navigation. Was that science? Navigation was just navigation, wasn't it? Getting your ship there and back? It didn't take a scientist to do that, did it? Scientists were bearded men who read heavy books, talked big words, weren't they? Who ever heard of sci a scientist going to sea? Captain Prince came around one evening. Did you mean what you said, Nate, that you'd sail anywhere on anything? Yes, I did. Then you'll get your wish. The new owners of the Estrella want us to go as master and supercargo to Batavia for coffee. He smiled grimly. They assure me I can pick up a better crew in Boston than the one we saw handling the ship. Nate said, at least they'll be better when you get done with them. Most of our men are scattered, but I did see Charlie Waldo. Nate grinned. Fine, it's always a help to have a handy cabin boy. Prince stood. Then you'll go. I'll write them tonight. We'd better drive to Boston when the time comes. The stage might not have room for all your gear. Hab and William both were in port before Nate left for Boston. Tan, brawny fellows they were. They teased Nate, asking him how he kept his feet in a squall. But their teasing was mixed with respect. They had been hearing tales from the men who had sailed under him. And uh, we'll pause that chapter for now, and we'll finish... Uh, sailing we'll finish strange sailing orders uh next time that's uh chapter 19 strange sailing orders and we'll finish that next time hope you guys are enjoying the story love you talk to you later bye